Okay, everybody, this is Mooney Dashcam. Today, we are in Hunts Point in the Bronx. We're going to be talking about Father Louis Giganti, the brother of Vincent the Chin Giganti, who was the boss of the Genovese crime family, known as like the crazy boss, always wore bathrobes, wandered around, stuff like that. Um, Louis Giganti just passed away recently, October 19th, 2022, at 90 years old. Uh, save your rest in peace till the end of the video because this guy was a real piece of sh so let's flip this around and get into it. The address that we're heading to right now is 878 Tiffany Street, the location of St. Athanasius Church that Louis Giganti was the priest at for a very long time. So he was the youngest of his brothers here, four brothers. The one we all know, Vincent the Chin Giganti, died in 2005, the Genovese boss. Thought to be one of the most powerful crime bosses in the nation. So you can imagine how weird that dynamic is. Having a priest brother and you're the crime boss. And then being the priest and having the brother that's a crime boss, that's also very weird. Then there's three more brothers. Ralph Giganti, who is a captain, Genovese captain. Mario Giganti, uh, another Genovese captain. Then you have Pasquale Giganti, who I know for a fact was in the mafia, but I don't know his title. Now let's breeze past some of the good things that Father Giganti did, and then we'll get into some of the more deplorable shit that he did. So he created SEBCO, the Southeast Bronx Community Organization. He was the leader of that for 40 years. Over 300 employees, more than 6,000 units were built for low-income housing. In 2007, he retired and his nephew took it over, stayed in the Giganti name. It's a nice view we have. Normally got nighttime videos, but look at the sky. Come on. No one brings you this. No one brings you what I bring you. He was elected to city council at one point. He actually used $25,000 of his own money to bail out one of the Central Park Five in the 1980s. Whoa, this road. Hello, hello. Look at this pier right here, by the way. Come on, that's pretty. Yeah, I'm sure some of you guys know some of the details of the Central Park Five. I know there was recently a series put out about them. That was pretty popular. He was one of the biggest contributors in revitalizing the South Bronx, mostly in Hunts Point. I'll put up a picture of what the South Bronx looked like, him standing in front of like a leveled area. Uh, it was pretty crazy what it was back then. And he did have a part in bringing it up because he created Sebco. Now, let's not pretend like he was a total angel in that sense. He actually has his name in big letters on a building off the Cross Bronx Expressway. You can see them. It's a yellow and black writing. A lot of people from this area know exactly what I'm talking about. Up the picture, of course. He sometimes carried around a baseball bat since he was working in the South Bronx to defend himself on the street, which is kind of a cool thing, but it gets way overshadowed by all the bad shit he did. Now, an investigation by the Village Voice in 2007 revealed that his publicly financed $50 million investment for housing ended up benefiting construction companies owned and affiliated with mobsters, high-ranking mobsters. So he was doing a lot of deals that was putting money in the pockets of a lot of high-ups in the mafia, which we're not super surprised his brother was a boss it said over the course of time that he was doing business, more than $80 million was funneled from his business into the pockets of mafia-owned businesses. He was pretty much a tie between politicians, the church, and mobsters. He would get large payoffs in donation boxes at mass. He was just a slimy guy. Like He made it, he put on a good face and put on a good public image but he was just a guy that was out to get himself and everyone around him rich. A mob informant once testified that Lewis himself was actually a made man. Later, he denied that testimony. When asked, Lewis was very dismissive of it. The FBI considered him a member or associate of the Genovese family. And then it went on to say that he, he could have been an associate to many other families because he helped out 
not just the Genovese family. He helped out a lot of people. I'm assuming he helped out anybody that could help him out. That was the kind of guy it seems like he was. To the left right here is the Sebco building. Let's pull up and get a good shot of that real quick before we move on. It's funny, when I was coming to this location, I was, you know, reading up on it. I saw that building. I was like, no way the building's right here. That's crazy. But, of course, it is. And here is the church on the right. We're going to loop around because they have the street blocked off. We're going to hop out and take a look at this church. He denied knowledge of organized crime. And he called the mafia an Italian stereotype created by the news media and law enforcement. He insisted that his brother was just mentally ill and that he was a saint. I'll put up pictures of him walking his brother around. He knew the game that his brother was playing. And we all know that his brother was playing the game. At one point he was asked to talk to the grand jury and he would not answer any grand jury questions about his brother or Joe Colombo that he was being asked about. He did not give straight answers and he was saying that he was exempt by priest penitent confidentiality. He was sent to jail for 10 days but let out in seven for good behavior because he didn't answer those questions. All right, let's pull up to this church and we'll get the real, um, the real last bit of how horrible a person this man was. You can imagine where the story's going if you don't already know. A priest, come on. Say hi to the truck before we move on any farther. Pay it the respect it deserves. So this is the church. There's two ways you can pronounce this church. Saint Athanasius. Saint Athanasius. But here it is. I don't know why this whole street is blocked off here. Let's go look at these statues, why not? No way. This is a statue of him. I didn't even know this was here. Hey, look. Uh, the statue of a child molester. That's cool. Now, you guys know that I'm very unbiased in all the videos that I make. But when someone does something like this, you get a whole video made about you that you're a child molester. I don't know why no one's coming down ripping this statue down. But, hey. So I guess this whole little courtyard is dedicated to him or dedicated to the church in general. So last year in 2021, Louis Giganti was one of the 177 names recently revealed in a wave of lawsuits against people connected to the Archdiocese of New York. Two lawsuits were placed against him. One for sexually assaulting a 10-year-old girl in the 1960s and for forcing a 9 or 10-year-old boy to perform oral sex repeatedly in the mid-70s. He was a Bible study student. So when I say this guy's a piece of shit, I'm actually being very nice. The sexual abuse was open and obvious and known by many students, children, clergy, and administration, and no action was taken to stop it. He never commented on the lawsuits. The cases are still pending in court, obviously not anymore. Um, I have to say that none of this is confirmed because the cases never went fully through. Didn't go through the trial, so I have to say that. But, we can all imagine. Oh, this actually happened at this church. That's why I wanted to end at this church. So, 
real fun big big statue form. I should pose with the statue for the thumbnail. Let's get back in the truck and finish this video off. Quick alpha check in another setting. Alpha check with a child molester. So when I started research for this video, I did not expect to see anything of any importance at all. I actually thought I was not going to do the video because I thought it was too boring. And then I dug a little farther into it, and then I saw the mob ties, and I saw the little political shit, and I saw, and I saw the child molestation. And I was like, oh, this guy gets a video about him, just in honor of his death. He gets a nice, this, you know, I'll put this out there to really cement his legacy in place as what he was. So a slimy priest, a sleazy politician, and a half a gangster, and a mob apologist. I mean. This might be the worst guy I've ever done a video on. All right, I'll see you guys in the next one. Hope you enjoyed. I well, hope you didn't enjoy, but hope you got a kick out of some of the stuff I said. Goodbye.